Welcome to Love Them Knives. We're in the studio today. We've got uh, Spiderco. We got Spiderco Ethnic Series. Uh, they make different knives that are uh, the design is influenced from different knives from around the world. They may be Asian, they may be European, they may be African influence, whatever. And this one is called the Euro Edge. And this is a polished G10 scales, stainless pocket clip, stainless steel liners, a G10 backspacer, looks polished. A nice high-end steel blade, uh, CPMS 30V. It's got these fullers here, which, you know, I mean, um, back in the day, you know, hundreds of hundreds of years ago when um, <clears throat> they would forge knives, um, these help like uh, add rigidity. Also, um, well, I mean, stylistic points as well, but uh, when iron or steel was very precious, I mean, uh, you don't, you're saving some material by doing these as well. So it was economic, it was uh, rigidity, it was, looks good too. So Ed Shimp is the designer on this one and you know, he'll go around, this is made in uh, Taiwan. Um, he'll go around and look at different types of knives and uh, then do uh, a knife that is reminiscent of a certain uh, ethnicity, culture. And this one here is kind of that Swiss dagger look. You can see how, I mean, if you, have you ever seen the Boker Swiss dagger? I mean, you can go online, take a look. I mean, they have, uh, you know, it, it, it flares out near the top. It has this kind of guard. Uh, but it's a fixed blade, obviously. These are folding knives. So, I mean, you're trying to make a dagger look, but you, you're not trying to make a dagger uh, because you don't want to sharpen this edge because then you're really going to hurt yourselves from a marketing standpoint because there are a, a lot of uh, states or, or county municipalities that don't allow double-edged uh, weapons. So you don't want to kind of knock yourself completely out of the marketplace uh, because they're illegal. Uh, so you keep this back swedge unsharpened. And you're trying to do and be symmetrical, but in a way, because of that spider hole and stuff here, I would have probably cut this on down across here. But I mean, in any case, it's not completely symmetrical, but it's... You know, it has that look, that dagger look, which I thought was cool. When I saw this knife, and I've seen a lot of their ethnic series knives, and to tell you the truth, I haven't been like overly um, impressed, I should say. I've had the Hungarian on my side. I've had some others that are the ethnic series knives, but this one really spoke to me. The Polish G10, these big, huge fullers in the handle, actually. Um, a really crisp, angular, definitive design here. And the fact that this is like a 3.9 inch blade, so I like a little bit bigger blade. 3.2, yeah, it's good for a light, you know, different type of carry, but overall, yeah, I like the longer blades. And so this speaks to me more in that regard. Lockup is pretty, pretty substantial, like 40%, 45 maybe. You know, I'm trying to feel on here and I'm, I'm going, uh, to, as far as the pivot goes, um, I'm looking in there and I'm seeing gold. Um... I don't know that I'm seeing, I don't think I'm seeing bearings, but I think I'm seeing phosphor bronze washers in there. And you know what? As I've had this knife, 
um, it has got smoother and smoother. And I haven't dumped any lube or anything, haven't done anything in that regard. It's not one where I can, you know, flick it open yet. It's not that quite that uh, slick, but it opens pretty easily. Now, if you're a lefty, you got some issues because this pocket clip is right hand tip up only. There's no left hand option. Lanyard hole right here. So that's nice. And it's tubed. I mean, it's it goes through the spacer. It's it's substantial. Let's weigh it real quick. Six ounces. Yeah, that's a chunk of change, huh? One sixty-nine. Okay, so we got six ounces. Yeah, I, I, I knew this. That's a lot of G10, and those liners are heavy. Those stainless liners are heavy. And I don't know, did you see? I haven't, I, didn't, I haven't even checked. Yeah, they even skeletonized a little bit. And God only knows what it would have been had they not, huh? You can see there. Mm, a little bit down below, actually, back in here. I mean, you got to have the cutout for your liner, but that's more than just a cutout for the liner. And up here, yeah, you got some skeletonized areas up there, too, for weight uh, savings. But those are pretty thick stainless liners. So it's heavy, well-built knife. Look at your pass-through area to disengage your liner lock. Ooh, that's all. You got a lot there. I mean, they have really, I mean, you know how many knives are about level here and you kind of got to feel your way across? But here, no, not a problem at all. It's kind of far back, though. I mean, usually your, your pass-through is like up here, but here it's a little further back. Yeah, but it works. I mean, like the like the size of it. What have I got over here I can compare? Like the Manix. So the Manix is going to be smaller because the Manix is not a four inch blade or anywhere near there. It's eight and a quarter overall. So look at that Euro edge. I mean, it's... I mean, this is a normal EDC knife. This is not a little, you know, toy knife or anything. This is your standard kind of EDC thing. And look at how much bigger this is than that. Ooh, that's some stuff, huh? Okay, well, it's kind of like how big old boy are you? Well, we're going to find out. And uh, get our hands on it. Almost four inches, isn't it? See that 10, 10 centimeters, 100 millimeter? Yep, that's what speaks to you right there. And run it right up to the tip. And yeah, about right four inches. And overall, ooh, it's nine. It's nine right there. Pretty close, which is close to 23 centimeters. Good size. Big knife. Four and nine. Five inch handle, four inch blade. What do we got for blade stock? Four millimeters. That's pretty thick. I don't see that on spider codes that often. 0.155 of an inch. And can we even? No, we can't. We need to go to the caliper. So that's 13.6. 13.8. 13.8. It's a little over half an inch. But that's fairly thick i mean uh that's a good grip good handful feels comfortable in the hand this pocket clip doesn't bother me that lays pretty low along that scale so that's that's pretty good and it kind of gives you a little place here to kind of rest your thumb up against and under here for your finger kind of guard yeah you know i don't you know what do you use this knife for you use it to put with the other ethnic series knives in your collection and then you put them in a case and you look at them <laughs> nah just whatever um but i mean it, you know you can you can cut you know you can slide you pierce for sure uh on that uh, respect of course this is not sharp which is good when you got a folder i mean you really want to lay your fingers 
when you close it, you want to lay your fingers on a, on a, on a super sharp edge like this when you close your knife or you accidentally run your finger down your, see that to me, having a double edge knife like this folding, that doesn't make any sense to me because you, you've got this razor edge exposed. You're pulling this thing out of your pocket or you're grabbing it. Uh, no, that's no bueno. I don't want to put my, I don't want to put pressure here. Not at all. I'm just saying. I mean, there were so many people giving shit to uh, one of the reviewers saying, you know, they they should, uh, and it's sharp, they should uh, have made it double-edged. That killed it for them. And it's like, it not only killed it for you, it would have killed you. <laughs> Just go ahead and slide your finger down that edge. Have them put your thumb back on. I don't know. To me, no, I don't need a double edge. I really don't want one. Really don't want one. But I like the look of the dagger. I do. And it's a big old boy, too. Four inch, nine inch overall. Six ounces. Nice and hefty. And that polished G10 is schlick. Now, it's schlick. That's a good thing and a bad thing. And not a whole lot of, no, there's not a whole lot of texture going on there. Not like this is probably going to be your go to farm, ranch, and, and woods and camping type knife. You know, if I was going to go out roughing it, this is not what I'm going to slide in my pocket. But if I'm going to meet some buddies and show something off, this might be the one I'd take. Because, hey, check this out. Looks like a dagger, dude. <laughs> and it's for real. I mean, this is uh, some serious steel. These are serious materials. This is a real, real knife that can actually be used very heavily and seriously. But, I mean, but you have the, the style, the design there that's just, to me, really kind of grabs my attention. I was going to show you something. Oh, I stole this off the web. See, Ethnic Series. You see these bad boys? Do you see one of these knives that you want really, really bad? Because I don't know. They look like a bunch of uh, old Polish men that are bent over with age. Or I don't know. I just, I'm just going, I'm, everything's crooked here. This is crooked, this is crooked, crooked. I, I don't know, I just, nah, I mean, I just, this one I like. And I've never had my, my hands on that one. And here's my Euro edge here. Straight, dagger, cool. This one's not bad. This one, no, not even in my wildest nightmares. Sorry, I just, I don't know. Right? I don't know. Just saying. Okay, Blade HQ. Go to the paper. Euro Edge. Liner Lock. Yes, it is. $221.97. Um, nine inches overall. Four inch blade, basically. And Spear Point. Yes, it is. G10. Stainless. Six ounce. Right hand. And that Ed Shemp. Blah, blah, blah. Paying homage. And uh, when you buy it, you'll be paying, paying homage and just paying uh, $220 something dollars. So, um, yep, this is a non slip grip. Oh, yeah, okay, maybe I, I'm not seeing that, but uh, really, is glass a non slip grip? I'm not no, I'm not seeing that. That's really, really schlick. You can always wrap some sandpaper around it with the sandpaper side out. Um, no, but I, I, I that doesn't I, I don't think I'd want this as a heavy grainy uh, synthetic grip. I mean that's not what this is all about anyhow. You know this is kind of more for show than go, but it can go. Yeah, it can go because it's got the materials to do that. But no, I, I, I like a little bit of shine. I like a little bit of refinement to it, especially at that price range. Oh, 
So you get it, and it comes in a bubble pouch, and it comes in a typical Spyderco box, and, you know, they the, when they do these series, they at least, you know, the paperwork's just not, like, generic. They actually talk about, you know, this specific knife in here. Ed Champ, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Fuller's. Uh, Blood Grooves, they said that name in there, which is an interesting concept of a discussion. Because, I mean, probably somebody talking out his left side to me at one time goes, you know, the blood groove, you know, it's there when you stab somebody. It creates suction when you withdraw it, and so it does more damage. I don't know. I don't know. I, I heard that once, and I don't know if I believe that, and I don't know if that's a reason. What I've heard from more recent, probably more knowledgeable people is it saves material, it adds rigidity, and it is a, a design element. So I think I can go with that. Cool knife, though. If if one of the, the uh, ethnic series was to end up in my permanent collection, it'd be this. I mean, it really would be. I, I, I do like this. I like this design. I really do. So, yeah, be what it may. Uh, the rest of them, uh, the Hungarian was kind of interesting, but I don't know. Now, th it'd be this one. I like it big, heavy, feels good in the hand. Sh just love the glossy G10 and love that dagger point. I love Swiss dagger. I've been so tempted for so long to get that Swiss dagger that Boker puts out, but that damn thing is what? Three, four hundred bucks or something like that? I think they made a really high-end one, even way more expensive than that. And it's a fixed blade, but here you go. You could pocket this one and have that Swiss dagger effect. I, I don't know, I, I'm really drawn to that. So, you know, sue me, what can I say? I really, I yeah, I like this one. I like it when Spyderco does you know, different stuff, uh, collaboratives and things like that. I mean, the para, I like. The military, I like. And the Endura, delicate stuff. Ladybug even got one on my wife's keychain. But these, this is more of a departure that it really fascinates me about what Spyderco does. So thank you so much for joining me. Subscribe if you'd like. When we do our giveaways, they you have to be a subscriber to win. So that helps. You know what we do around here? We love them knives. So stay sharp, my friends.